Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and today it's a look inside and we're going to take a look inside this little Tenma audio generator. You might remember this from one of my recent mailbag videos. I picked it up on eBay rather cheaply and it's a rather simple device but rather charming I think. So I think let's take a look inside, see what makes it tick and then let's have a look at some of the waveforms that we can get out of it. So let's get this little gadget over on the bench and take a look. It's actually pretty cool this. I like these little gadgets. It's a pretty simple device but it seems quite well made. It seems it's got a bit of weight to it. It seems pretty solid. I think we need some batteries. Yeah, we need a nine volt battery. That's not a problem. We have that. So it's made in Taiwan. It looks almost like it should have a screen there, but no, it's just got a little low battery LED, no actual LCD display on this. Maybe it's a generic case that they use for various different things. So you've just got your frequency range there, times one or times 100, waveform, sine or square and your attenuation from 0 or minus 20 dBs, sync and signal out. And you've got an amplitude control there, selects your frequency and that's it. That is literally it. Came in this little box, I don't know whether that's the original box, I'm not sure, but it did come with some leads, which is nice to see. Okay. So we've got banana to crocodile clip. That's always a useful combination. And I think that was it. There was no instructions or anything, but it's a pretty simple device, isn't it? How can we go wrong? Famous last words, eh? All right, well, let's have a look inside this. I'm hoping it's just these two screws here. I'm hoping we don't have to take these pads out. Was there any screws? Is there any screws in the battery compartment? No, nothing. Sometimes it's nice to just have a look at stuff like this. Just take a look see what makes it work. It's part of the tinkering process. You have to have a tinkering process with these things. Ah, it just unclips. There's a little plastic clip there. There you go. Yeah, there we go. That's all right. All right. right, nothing in there. Ah, we've got some interesting stuff here. Oh, we've got another board underneath. Okay. Oh, this is where all the interesting stuff happens. I'm seeing loads of Resistors down here, potentiometer for adjustment, I suppose. Some sort of trim pot. Oh, look, there's lots going on in here. Let's get this out. I'm intrigued. I'd like to see what's inside these things. I've picked up a few little meters and bits and bobs like this. I like collecting these little ones because they're really cheap and often they're quite interesting. I think they're quite interesting. I hope you do too. I like to see what makes things work. So what's the next stage of getting this apart? Ah, oh, we've got some pin headers there. And I presume some more here. Yes. Yes, there's some pin headers on this side. There you go. Got it. We got it. We got it. All right. Now we can see all the goodness inside. Oh, so you've got to switch contacts there. They actually look all right. They don't look like they need cleaning. This doesn't look like it's had hardly any use, to be honest. It looks really clean inside. It's not dusty or anything at all. We've got all our resistors there, a couple of polystyrene capacitors, a couple of film capacitors. Other than that, it looks pretty simple. That's just the switch mechanism. I presume that just sits on there. It does. Yep, that's the other half of it. It's just more clips on the bottom. I'm not going to tip that up. We'll make sure we get that back in right, otherwise it's not going to work properly. Oh, that's our little potentiometer there, which was for the amplitude. And our main switch, and that's it. It's really pretty simple in there. And there you can see you've got the little hole for the LED, which is on this board here. Big, big chunky one. I guess that it looks like it's got a cut out there for a display. So again, it's probably a generic case that they use for multiple things much like the little lux meter that we looked at recently so this is where everything's going on isn't it look at that lovely neat line of resistors there it's very aesthetic isn't it it's just in such nice condition i suspect it's had a bit of light use and then stored in its box chip wires we've got a tc 4011 bp here oh it's a logic gate there's a nand gate 
couple of potentiometers here, like little trimmers. There's a 100K and a 5K. A couple of transistors there. Now that was for the uh, waveform and your attenuation there. And that's your range switch. Big old chunky one, nice and clicky. You your pin headers there that connect to the top board. There's a Texas Instruments TL072CP op amp. There's a couple of those. And we've got a JFET. Good old JRC, this 062D, this one. There's a JFET op amp. Don't think I've seen any date codes, particularly 084B, 1984, maybe. I'm not very good with date codes, as we've seen before. I can be looking right at one and not see it. Remember the Lux meter? It was right on the front of the meter. I did not see that. But nicely put together, very neat. Very neatly put together. I like the little rows of resistors and stuff. Very cool. All right, let's pop it back together then. I'm gonna put a battery in this and put it on the scope. See what we can do with it. All right, we've got to get these pin headers lined up properly. So we've got one there, one there. Make sure we get that lined up so we don't smush any pins. And have we got this one lined up? Yeah, I believe so. All right, let's get the screws back in. Right, there we go, that's those back together. Awesome. Now just put the back of the case on. And we're there. This was nice and easy. You can see there's just a little plastic clip on each side there. And two on the top. That's it. Nicely snapped back together. Two little screws there to go in. And oh, we'll find ourselves a nine volt battery then. Because we're going into plastic, we've got to back it off slightly. There you go until it finds its groove. You've got to find your groove. Now, nine volt battery then. This is a good one, I believe. Right, there we go. We can see the scope now, so let's pop that on. And I'm gonna pop some test leads in here. Just gonna use these ones. That's that. And pop that there so you can see what's going on. I'm going to put an adapter on there. Plug my banana plugs in. All right. So we're on. Technically we're on. Let's turn it. Ah, amplitude up. Yeah, we've got something. Adjust my time base. Okay, that's not bad. So we can change our amplitude. Yeah. Well, it's okay. It's pretty stable. It's not wobbling about. It's not bad for such a little device. So we've got sine or square. Oh, there's our square wave. Okay. We've got attenuation here. That's on zero. We've got minus 20 dBs. So we can go through our frequencies here. So we go from 20 hertz to 1.5k. I'm just interested to see what the wave is like. 75, 80, 100, 120, 150, 180. Let me expand the time base out a bit so we can keep an eye on it. I mean, it's not bad. So actually, you know, if you just need a little sine wave for something, to test something, it's pretty good. It just sits there quite nicely. So this would be putting out a tone that we can use potentially for testing amplifiers and stuff. So I've got a random little speaker here, which I've got hooked up. So I'm gonna hook up to the sync output, which is not ideal, it's more of a TTL output, but it will do for a quick and easy test on this little speaker and means I can keep the waveform on the scope. So if I put that right next to my microphone, you can probably hear that as I go up the frequencies, you'll be able to hear it change. And there you go. You can make a tune out of that. So that's quite handy actually. You could put that signal into an amplifier for testing purposes and it's just quite a handy little portable. Again, I like these little battery powered portable devices. You know, it's a bit old, it's a bit retro, but it still does the job. So the frequency range on this is 20 hertz to 150 kilohertz, and you've got 46 steps. So on the times one range, goes from 20 hertz to 1.5 kilohertz, and on the 100 times range, 
goes from 2 kilohertz to 150 kilohertz. In the specs, it claims the accuracy is plus minus 3% or less. And this is made by Tenma. Although this, this particular unit, as we saw on the back, is made in Taiwan, but Tenma's actually based in Ohio. Yeah, it's quite a cool little thing. I like that and it functions and it could actually be useful in testing stuff. It's just a cool little thing. Well, I didn't know quite what to expect from our little portable tone generator, but it's actually all right, isn't it? It does quite a good job of producing a waveform, sine wave, a square wave, and a test tone. So it does exactly what it should do. And it was rather nice taking a look at it. It's very nicely made inside, and it does a good job. It's just a nice diversion sometimes to take a look inside something and see how it works. I've got a nice little collection of these vintage meters. I love these little meters. They're quite cheap to collect and they're very pleasing to the eye. And it's also fun once in a while to just tinker around with one, take it apart, see what makes it work and have a play around with it, test it out. All part of the fun in my book. Anyway, thanks for joining me and I hope you've enjoyed today's video about this little audio generator. As always, massive thanks to everyone for liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing. If you'd like to go ahead and hit the subscribe button, it's always massively appreciated and helps to support the channel. I'll be back soon with some more tech related videos, but in the meantime, take care and I'll see you on the next one.